everybody. My name is Christoph Sachs. Uh, welcome to my presentation with the topic trace-based code coverage. Uh, code coverage is no new feature of Trace32, but has seen a number of improvements within the last couple of years. The main goal has been to establish the trace-based approach as a serious alternative to uh, other code coverage methods. My presentation is divided up into, into four main parts. In the first part, I'm going to present, the, to present a basic overview over the trace-based code coverage approach. In the second part, I'm going to focus on uh, features of the ARM trace interface that are relevant for code coverage analysis. And uh, after this, I'm going to present uh, trace evaluation options of Trace32. And lastly, I'm, I'm going to present uh, the code coverage approach itself. Let's start with the general overview. Here we have the basic setup that is used for, for trace-based trace -based code coverage analysis. On the, on the left side, we have our, our chip. Then we have our, our lot of trace tools and, uh, and a debug tool. And on the right side, we have our, our host. The trace tool is connected to the, to the chip via the debug and the, and the trace interface. And the connection over the trace interface is obviously required to, to transmit the code coverage data, whereas the connection uh, uh, via debug interface is used to access the target and to control the program execution. The main uh, benefit of the trace-based code coverage uh, approach is that it is completely non-intrusive. This means the unmodified application can be testing and there is no need to use a, a special instrumented version to gather code coverage and information. Additionally, there is no need to reserve uh, some kind of memory region on, on, the, on the target to, to, have a, to have a monitoring application running that, that, that gathers code coverage data. Um, the generation of trace data is completely independent from the program execution. This means the, the timing and interrupt behavior of the application is not affected. And this means as a consequence that the testing effort is reduced uh, because you can, you can verify the timing behavior of your application and, and collect uh, code coverage data at the same time. Another ad advantage of this approach is that the target environment is the test environment. Trace32 uses a code coverage approach that is based on the object code, uh, which is equal to the assembly code of the, of the software application. Um, this means that uh, that uh, there is no need to, to undergo additional verification efforts because uh, normally you would have to prove that the results that you uh, received in your testing environment is identical or, or, or can also be applied to your, to your target and, and environment. And with the, with the trace-based approach, testing environment is equal to the target and environment, so this issue is basically non-existent. The downside of this approach is that the target has to provide a trace feature and unfortunately not all chips available on the market have, uh, have, have trace support. Let's have another look at our setup. Um, in general, if we, if we look at it from a functional point of view, we have three main building blocks. We have the trace interface that determines which kind of data is available for our analysis. Then we have the recording and processing. And on the right side, we have the code coverage analysis and the review. The review is done on our host PC, which, uh, which has an instance of, instance of Trace32 Power View running, which controls the code coverage analysis, analysis and, and can be used to review the, review the results. I will discuss these three parts in the next sections of my presentation. Let's start with the features of the ARM trace interface. The central unit of the ARM trace interface are the so-called ARM trace macrocells. Uh, the ARM trace macrocell um, receives its information from the directly from, from the ARM core and uses this information to 
generates generate trace data and to transmit this data to the to the trace port. The ARM trace microsoles are capable of performing real-time tracing and we have two versions. We have the um, embedded trace microsoles or, or ETM uh, which are capable of performing program and data tracing and we have the the PTM which stands for program uh, trace microsoles which is only capable of uh, program flow tracing. The defining architecture or the defining system architecture for all uh, newly re released ARM um, core families is ARM CoreSight and ARM CoreSight makes it possible to combine um, several um, ARM cores within the same chip and each ARM core can have, uh, can have its own trace source. Uh, we have here um, one, two, three cores, and each core has its own ARM trace microcell. The trace data of all the microcells is collected by a, by a trace panel and uh, transmitted to the trace port. Here we have an overview over the different uh, trace microcells that uh, are used for the, for the ARM core families. For the ETM, we have three versions, ETM V1, 2, 3. And for the PTM, we have a single version. And as can be seen, for the for the recently received uh, released um, core families, um, they either use the ETM v3 protocol or the or the PTM. Let's have a closer look at the ETM v1. Here is the basic basic structure. On the left, we have the core, and we have the output data from the core. And uh, the ETM module produces the trace information from this from this data, and the trace information uh, is provided by four signals. We have a clock signal. We have the status. We have we have status flags of the execution execution stage of the core pipeline. We have a synchronization signal, and we have a signal that transmits um, address and data information that is relevant to the trace data. The most important signal for our code coverage uh, purpose is the is the is the is the are the status flags of the of the pipeline status uh, pipeline message. Sorry, are the are the flags for the um, pipeline status messages? We have uh, several several flags as can be seen. Um, there are basically instructions and branches distinguished, and we have um, we have flags for instruction without data and with data and the same applies for branches and by branch um, for, uh, this branch executed flag stands for um, indirect branches and indirect branches are branches that uh, use as target destination or target address destination the value that is provided by a, by a CPU register this is what they call indirect branches um, the ARM assembly code has the concept of conditional execution, and uh, this means um, most of the um, ARM assembly instructions can be combined can be combined with a conditional predicate. And uh, before the instruction is executed, this conditional predicate is evaluated, and if it's evaluated false, then this um, EN flag is is emitted. And this stands for that the execution failed because the condition requirement was ever false. Here we have the corresponding signal timing for an ETMV1. On top we have the we have our clock signal, then we have the execution status of the of the CPU pipeline. We have here uh, the flex number trace, trace disabled, instruction executed, and so on. And in the middle, we have a execution flag for an indirect branch, and the trace sync signal sig uh, indicates that um, there is valid uh, address data on this trace data line. The major difference between the ETMv1 and the ETMv3 we see here is that uh, that the pipeline status and the uh, and the trace data and address information have been merged into one signal. 
this can also be seen if we if we compare it with the with the signal timing. We have here our, our, our clock and this trace control signal indicates if it goes low that there are valid trace packets. And this uh, trace packets can either contain only um, execution status information or can also uh, consist of uh, data or address information, as you see on the, on the right side. The last protocol I want to present is the, is the, is the PTM. And the PTM um, does not support any, any data tracing. If we, compare, if we compare the corresponding signal timing of the PTM and an ETM, here we have I've chosen ETM V1. If, um, if the same instruction sequence is executed, there's, there's the difference that for the ETM V1, um, each instruction basically, uh, basically uh, generates a distinct trace flag or, or ex ex execution status flag. Whereas for the PTM, we only generate trace in information for so-called waypoint instructions. Um, this, this, this causes the, the problem for us that uh, for all the instructions that are no waypoint instructions, we have no direct trace information. This means the trace tool has to um, derive the execution status of, this, uh, of, the ex of the instructions between two waypoint instructions on its own. This is especially problematic if there are conditional instructions between two waypoint instructions, because this means we have no uh, trace data um, that, that, that could indicate the execution status of this conditional instruction.